Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to teach you how to make a 3.5. Um, it is a unbalanced audio connector. It's one of the most common ones that we use. Another one that we see a lot is a RCA. The primary difference between this specific 3.5 and an RCA is that there are two audio channels on this connector. You typically have a positive tip, a positive ring, and a positive sleeve. And they also have a mono version of this, which is a single audio channel that doesn't have the ring. So this, the sleeve is just really long. I actually don't have one of those to show you, but it terminates the same way. The connector is made up of, let's see, four different parts. You have the actual connector itself. You have this shielding. Then you have the strain relief. And then, I don't remember what this part is called. I think it was bushing on the last video. So, to the first thing that you need to do when you put all this stuff together is you need to have a piece of five wire and you strip it back. So, score the wire, pull off the outside conductor, or the, excuse me, the outside uh, shielding. We're going to trim off all the foil because we don't need any of it. So now our wire looks something like this. We don't need the white and the green because we only need the ground and then the red and the black for our conductor. So I just cut the white and the green out, no big deal. These are a little long. I'm going to shorten them up and I will end up shorting them up again, but this is what you're left with. You're left with a red, a black, and a ground. So, if you see, it, you can kind of um, size it up with the actual connector itself. So to do that, the the ground this pe this piece right here is going to sit in the bottom tray, and the red is going to go on the tip, and the black is going to go on the ring. So if you're looking at it with the connector away from you or the plug-in away from you you have red on the left black on the right and ground in the tray so i'm going to size up these wires now just so that it fits nice and pretty and i we don't have to spend a lot of time cutting resoldering cutting resoldering if you get it cut uh to length the first time you only have to do it once so that's about right right there we we'll trim off the ground then i'm going to leave these just a little bit longer so it looks something like that now and remember, I want red on the left and black on the right. If the tip's facing away from us, I'm gonna strip off the edge. So now we got something that looks like this. So now what we need to do that our wire is prepped, we need to tin this with a soldering iron. So I have a soldering iron hot and ready over here. Let's see, I'm gonna just use my solder that I've got right here as a little support. So I don't have to hold it. I'm gonna take my wire. So let's see, so that we are tinning, all I did was like this, I just tinned the shield. Then I am tinning the uh, black conductor, tinning the red conductor. There you go. You got two different, you have everything, uh, everything tinned up. You have solder on every single conductor. Now what you need to do is we have to tin the actual connector. Best way to do this is to get it close like this. I don't ever tighten this on the actual connector itself, the 3.5. I just put it on the ends. Let's see, loosen this up real quick. There you go, right there. I just use it like that, boom. So now it's tight. So now I've got something like that and that it's just like another set of hands pretty much. So I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna hold that up and off the ground. Uh, let's see here, so I'm gonna go like that. I'm gonna add some solder to the bottom tray. I'm going to add some solder to the ring. Here we go. So what we don't wanna do is we don't have any type of bridging between those connectors back down to the tray. We want that to be completely their own conductor. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lay this flat in the tray, I heat up the solder, kinda of wiggle it back and forth, you'll see it set. You'll notice I can move everything with it when it's set. Let's see, this is actually, my black wire is a little long, so easy fix. Just trim it back a little bit. Boom, still still tinned. Just, it, it just makes, that will make it so it sets flush up against the spot you solder to. Tap it a little bit. Here we go. Let's see here. 
Very good. You can see that solder made. Maybe not. Very good. I think that'll do it. It won't come off. Okay. Now I got the last one. Same kind of thing. It's just a hair too long. I'm going to trim that off. Just cl clip the end just so it sets flush. How oh, I undid the black. Um, so that was our red and I just want to make sure I, I accidentally undid that black so I'm just going to make sure that that solder is good there we go I'm putting my soldering iron somewhere safe just so it doesn't burn anything now I'm just going to check my connector I'm going to make sure I don't have any bridges anywhere everything looks fine so now what you got to do is is these are the strain reliefs you just have to pinch those onto the actual conductors and it will keep the connector and keep the solders from coming undone so now what you do is you take the shielding, slide it down the wire, put it over everything like that. The second piece of it goes like that. You just twist it on. Final step is to pull this out and that's how you make a 3.5. Now, the only thing to remember about 3.5 is that I hear from everybody and that everybody always says is they say when they solder these in or they bring it into a DSP. They say red and black, positive, negative. That is not correct terminology with this specific connector. It's two positives, positive at the tip, a positive at the ring, and the ground is just your ground with the shield. So don't forget that, that's important because it's an unbalanced connector. There's no negative. You know, that looks so good, put it in the back of my truck. 